Hi folks, Thomas Simpson here with ThomasSimpson.com and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. And so today I'm here to talk about why search is so important in Splunk. And so if you've been following my channel, you know how excited I am to talk about Splunk. I've got, th I think, three Pluralsight courses that are all around Splunk. So in this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about how to search in Splunk, why it's important, and then I'll preview what I've got in my newest Pluralsight course, Performing Basic Searches in Splunk. And you can find all about that right after this. So welcome back. So I'm excited to really talk more about Splunk. And so specifically we want to talk about why it's important to be able to search in Splunk. So really from a perspective of Splunk, I mean, it's all about being able to search your data, right? Like there's different components that come into, hey, how do I install it, get it set up in my environment, build out the right architecture so that I can get the data in. But then once you get the data in, it's time to start searching and then go on to a second or third phase we talk about visualization. So whenever you're trying to search it, there's you know a couple different ways that you can go through and search through that data. There's some automated reports, there's some places that you can go in and search and pretty much kind of click through your data and see what you want. But specifically in this course, I take the basics of how to build out Splunk searches and how to start creating your own searches in Splunk. So if you're familiar with SQL, so you know structured query language, Splunk has what they call search processing language. And so within search processing language, this gives you the ability to go through and be able to pull out different fields, pull out different segments, be able to merge different fields, create lookups. There's a lot of different things that you can do within that. But being able to learn how to do that is gonna really help you. So if you remember, if you've done any kind of application development or specifically anything with databases, you know that, hey, once you know SQL, then you know that you know the, the, the keys are kind of open to the kingdom as long as you have the data, right? So same thing within Splunk. It's very important to at least get some baseline information around how you search and how you search using um, the search processing language. And so in my course that I've just released, we talk about the you know how to do how to do your basic searches in Splunk, and then you know there's different components about it, like how do you navigate the search interface. So a couple of different things that we go through in this course. So it's part of the newest learning path within Pluralsight's uh, Splunk offering, and I'm happy to be a part of that. But one of the first things we do is we learn how to navigate the interface. Next, we talk about field searches in Splunk and specifically how do you create different queries and different field searches within your Splunk and some of the operators and common things to be able just to pull out information like, hey, I wanna see, you know, miss logins or I want to see you know where people have tried to log in using password and been denied so like how would you you know what, what are those fields how are they structured how would you start to search through those that's one of the components that we talk about next we really key into the search processing language and how to build out queries and how to use those how to use the pipe command to be able to chain your commands together so a lot of information in there to help you be a better you know Splunk user Splunk administrator but it's really important for you to learn how to do SPL, not to be confused with SQL. Next, go through transforming commands. And so these are the commands that are really gonna set us up for another course that I'm working on where we start to put things in visualization. But from a transforming command, the way that you can go through those, I think I wrote a good blog post about you know, the top six uh, transforming commands, but these are commands that are gonna help you start structuring your data, right? You can use tables, you can start using a chart command to be able to put your data in more of a, think of it as like, you know, data, a, a loosely data framework, right? So being able to start visualizing and start putting your data in, in, in a area so that you can start quickly visualizing that data. And then last, we talk about lookups. So if you're familiar, you know, with SQL or you're familiar with application development, you know, that you might do a merge tables, right? You might have a table over here and my table over here and you pull those together. Within Splunk, we call that a lookup, right? So, you know, think of, um, having a different area codes. So you have all these different area codes um, for different phone numbers and say that you have a different table that's going to say, hey, you know, this area code is in Alabama, all right? So you can break them down by this, you know, this area codes in Georgia or Tennessee and imagine being able to being able to take that information. So instead of showing, you know, uh, 334, it would show you Alabama, right? Or whatever the corresponding um, area code is. So if it was, I don't even know in New York's, but <laughs> New York's area code, it would say, hey, this is from New York. And so that's what a lookup table is. And so those are one of the components that we talk about in this course. 
So that's all I have today. So thanks for tuning in. I'm excited to announce the newest uh, course in the learning path that I've been working on and really excited to share it with you. If you have any comments or any ideas for you know any episodes on here or any courses that you'd like for me to see, let me know. If you take the course, reach out, talk to me, you know, find me, you know, find me on here and tell me what you think about it. What do you think I can improve, what I missed out on, or you know, what you'd like to see in the future. Until then, see you again next time on Big Data, Big Questions.